I'll do whenever he wants me to. I'll try to do my best. I'll try to stand my test. I'll let my little light shine. Some lost sheep. I'll go through the storm and rain. And I'll try hard not to come. He wants me to try to do my best. I try to stand my test. I let my little light shine. Some long sheep. I'll go through the storm and rain. I try hard not to complain. Welcome, my beloved, to the First African Baptist Church Sunday School for 16 April 2023. As presented from the Boyd Sunday School book, Friends, Food, Fellowship. From the international lesson, it reads, Jesus cooks breakfast, <laughs> John 21, 1 through 14. Now, should you have any question about today's lesson or any biblical or religious question, you may email us at McBrideAlexander1958 at gmail.com. That's M-C-B-R-I-D-E-A-L-E-X-A-N-D-E-R-1958 at gmail.com. Or you may call us at 843-812-7876. You can even Facebook us at Alexander McBride. Click on the icon of the handsome snails of puppy and you will get all of the sermons and Sunday schools relative to the past two years. The aforementioned information will be posted at the end of the broadcast. Now, may I also invite you to wish up in person with us at 601 U Street in Beaufort, South Carolina, downtown Beaufort, right behind the chocolate tree. We meet each Sunday from 10 a.m. to 11.15 a.m. for Sunday school and 11.15 a.m. to approximately 12.30 p.m. for formal worship. May I also invite you to our Thursday Bible study on Thursday nights, from 6 to 7 p.m. for prayer and fellowship, and then from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. for Bible study, and we are currently studying the book of Revelations. You may come and ask any question about the Bible or religious question, and we'll seek to find the answer from the Word of God. We give all a priority to people that ask questions that are present there, and then we move on with the Bible study if there are no questions. As I said before, we're currently studying the book of Revelations. May I also remind you that with the help of Second Helpings and other contributors, to whom we say thank you so very much, we distribute food from our food pantry at our educational slash parsonage, which is located on the corner of Prince and New Street, right next door to the church. We do this each second and fourth Sunday from 12 noon until resources are depleted. The only prerequisite that we have is that you have a need and allow us to meet that need and follow the instructions by the distributors for their safety as well as your own. I would like to say also a few words of thanks to our friends and family at First Scott's Presbyterian and also FAB family and friends for making the Easter sunrise service a great success. In spite of the weather, the church was full and the word was alive. Thank you specifically, uh, Pastor Alex Mark and the First Scots family, as well as the FAB family. Thank you all so very much for your sacrifices and your faithfulness. Now, 
with the announcements pass, let us uh, open our Bibles to John the 21st chapter, starting at the first verse, or our Sunday school lesson to the appropriate Sunday school lesson. And I read from John 21 and 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus, and Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They said unto him, We also go with thee. And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And they answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fish's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were, two hundred cubits, dragging the net of fishes. And as soon then as they were come to land, they saw five coals there, and fish laid thereon, and bread. And Jesus said unto them, Bring the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, and hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And now the disciples dared ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth to them and fish likewise. Now this is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for your loving kindness for who you are and whose we are. Lord God, we come to you with humble hearts and bow down heads, Lord, and we seek your presence and we seek your guidance in today's Sunday School lesson. We ask, O oh Lord, that you direct our tongues, our mind, bring to mind those things you've taught us and open our understanding and our reasoning, Lord God. Help us to see in our mind's eye the events that took place at that particular time in history when you walked the earth with your disciples. Lord God, please forgive us of our sins. Give us a forgiving heart, Lord God, and help us to be like you in all that we say and do. Ever striving, Lord God, ever pressing toward the mark of the high calling that is in you, Christ Jesus. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And we thank you for this in the church of God is always saying to you and your word, amen and amen. Now, let's put everything in context here in verses 1 through 14. Now, prior to his death, Jesus had told his disciples that after he had risen, he would go before them into Galilee. You find uh, the emphasis on that in Matthew 26, 32 and Mark 14, 28. Now, following his resurrection, he told the women at the empty tomb to tell his disciples to go to Galilee, where they should see him, Matthew 28 and 10, something the angels reminded the women of at the tomb in Mark 16, 7 and Luke 24, 6. Now, in chapter 21, 21 verse 1 through 14, Jesus' meeting with his disciples in Galilee is recounted, and that's our today's lesson. Now, the context will be delivered in verses 1 through 3, and then we will get into the main thrust of the lesson, verses 4 through 14. So, verse 1 through 3. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise he himself. There were together Simon, Peter, and Thomas, called Didymus, and Nathaniel of the Canaan, in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and the two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. And they said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. Now, the key word afterwards, after these things, meta, uh, uh, metatatu, after these things, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. It happened this way, Simon, Peter, Thomas, known as Didymus, and they so and so, you, you heard the reading. After these things refer to the resurrection appearances recorded in chapter 20. So let's see what is happening here. 
Peter, Thomas, and Nathaniel all appear earlier in the gospel, but the sons of Zebedee, the sons of thunder, James and John, Mark 1, 19, have not previously been mentioned by name. Now, the two other disciples are not identified. Thomas is again said to be also known as Didymus, which means twin, suggesting that he had either twin brother or twin sister, of whom no mention is made in any of the gospel. Now, Simon Peter said he's going fishing, and he told them, and they said, well, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Now, as we take a break here, some have seen in this activity evidence of ongoing disorientation or even a dereliction of duty on the part of the disciples who have been commissioned in chapter 20, verses 21 through 23. But there's no hint of that in the way the story is told. Others have suggested that chapter 21, if added later to the gospel, may report events that took place earlier than the commission of chapter 20, 21 through 23. In this way, the anomaly of the disciples returning to their former occupation after their commissioning is overcome. However, it seems unnecessary to defend the disciples' actions. They did uh, a backslide, as some would teach or preach. They went to Galilee, like the angel said, like Jesus told them, like the women had said, the angel said, and they occupied themselves until Jesus showed up. Did not the scripture tell us in the Old Testament, occupy till I come, amen? It didn't say what, all they had to lean on was their old profession. So with that said, there's no defense needed for them of going back. That's just a nice little saying of people that's trying to say that they are, have this intellect that uh, should impress others, but just stick to the scripture and that, and that should be good enough, amen? So according to Mark 14, 28 and 16 and 7, Jesus himself had told them to return to Galilee and that he would see them there. And it was natural that they would occupy themselves fishing while they waited for him. Now, though nighttime was the best time for fishing, the disciples caught nothing. And such an experience was not without precedent for them. Remember Luke 5 and 5 when Jesus showed up and they were fishing and caught nothing. He told them to cast their nets to the right and they caught a great, great load of fish. Now, Having introduced you to today's lesson through the context of verses one through three, let's look into Jesus, the chef, uh, uh, as we move on, starting with verse four. It's early in the morning now, verse four. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, children, have you any meat? And they answered him, no. And he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and you shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it in for the multitude of fishes. In obedience, something. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples didn't know it was Jesus. And in a similar way, neither Mary in chapter 20, verse 15, nor the two disciples on the road to Emmaus in Luke 24, 15, realized at first who it was when Jesus appeared to them. Now, the boat was about 100 meters offshore, chapter 21, verse 8, and in the early light of the morning, it would not have been clear who it was standing on the shore. You just would have seen a silhouette of sorts. He called out to them, friends, literally children, haven't you any fish? And when they answered, no, he said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you'll find some. They followed his command. And when they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Deja vu, isn't it? In some ways, this was similar to the experience of Simon Peter and his partners recorded in Luke 5, 4 through 9. In both cases, the authority of Jesus over nature is implied and recognized. 7 and 8. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved, talking about John, said unto Peter, it is the Lord. Now, when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fish's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were, 200 cubits dragging the net with fishes. Now, Simon Peter had not yet been restored unto Jesus after uh, he had denied Jesus, but this is in the making, amen? It's not a surprise that when the disciples whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. If the disciple whom Jesus loved is identified as John, the son of Zebedee, then he was also a fisherman and was one of the partners involved with Peter on that early occasion recorded in Luke 5, 9 through uh, 4 through 9. Now, seeing a similar series of events unfold, that deja vu, 
he realized that the person on the shore was none other than Jesus. And as soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it's the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off. Uh, what's that? Ergo, uh, gymnos, that's where uh, the word gymnasium or gymnast, it means naked, would literally be rendered uh, 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 before he was naked. Ancient art and literature record that cast net fishermen were naked. So perhaps Peter being naked wrapped not a full outer garment, but a simple loincloth around him to show respect for Jesus before jumping into the water to make his way to the shore to meet him. However, the word uh, dies on am I, translated rap, can also mean hitch up, like hitching up your britches. It is possible, therefore, that Peter was not completely naked and did not put on a garment at all, but rather hitched up the garment he was wearing so that it would not impede him in the water as he made his way towards Jesus. Now, while Peter led the way to the shore and to Jesus, the other disciples followed in the boat towing the full net of fish, for they were not far from shore, about 100 meters, about 109 yards, a football field in nine yards. Verse nine, as soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid their own in bread. 10, Jesus said unto them, bring the fish which you have now caught. 11, Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, 150 and three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. There was a welcome surprise awaiting them on shore. When they landed, they saw a fire burning of coals. There was fish on it and bread. How had risen Jesus procured fish, coal, and bread uh, that he was cooking? And uh, it, it wasn't explained how. He did not ignore the fruit of their labors either. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you have just caught. God will use what's in your hands also. He do the supernatural, you do the natural, amen? Jesus addressed the seven disciples, but it was Peter who responded first, just like old impetuous always Peter. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, as it said, 153 to be exact, but even with so many, the net was not torn. Now, the evangelist's reference to the number of fish is probably not meant to be symbolic. You don't form nothing out of it or some symbolism, as some have suggested, but rather just to emphasize the miraculous nature of the catch. There was a large number of fish, and they were large fish, but even so, the net was not torn. Verse 12 and 13, Jesus said unto them, come and dine. And none of the disciples did ask him, who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. Now, following the landing of fish, Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. The next statement's puzzling though. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. If this reflects some lingering mental doubts, nevertheless, intuitively, they knew it was the Lord. What Jesus did next would have removed all traces of doubt. He came, he took the bread, broke it, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. They had seen him do this before for a multitude in chapter 6, 1 through 13, just as they had heard him tell them on a previous occasion where to net so many fish, Luke 5, uh, 4 through 9, last verse. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he had risen from the dead. This episode concludes with this epilogue, with the explanation. This was now the third time Jesus appeared. The first of the previous occasions related by the evangelists was when Jesus appeared to them when Thomas was absent, chapter 20, verse 19. The second time was when Thomas was present, chapter 20, verse 26. Now, this reference in chapter 1, uh, uh, back to the events in chapter 20, supports the unity of the Gospel of John and indicates that even if chapter 21 was added later as an epilogue, it was intended uh, to link in with what had been previously written. And what had been previously written was what John said in chapter 20, the whole purpose of it all, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. So the question boils down in this Sunday school lesson as well as last and all Sunday school lessons. Do you believe? Make the choice. Until next time, my beloved, Vivian Bottomdale, live before the face.
I'll do Whenever he wants me to I'll try to do my best I'll try to stand my test I'll let my little light shine Some law she I'll go through the storm and rain And I'll try hard not to come He wants me to try to do my best. I try to stand my test. I let my little light shine. Some Lord Jesus. I'll go through the storm and rain. I'll try hard not to complain. It's my desire.